Har was such a obviously integral part of your musical career. Do you still um, have a relationship with Ann and Nancy? Do you still talk to them? I don't talk to them very often. I run, I may run into them here and there. I ran into Ann at a studio in Seattle not too long ago, but no, we don't talk as much. It's you know they're, they're kind of like my ex-wives in a way. My you know <laughs> I mean I we we never had any arguments or anything like that. I didn't leave in a in a huff or anything like that. It was totally fine. Everybody was fine with it. It's just it was just time for me to start doing something else. I still love them dearly. Well. We were talking earlier before the interview started about uh, Hearts being inducted into the, the Rifle uh, Rock Roll Hall of Fame if obviously they ever get the uh, right uh, voting uh, process or the people who are uh, obviously doing the voting process out and get the real people who know music in, maybe they will get inducted with a bunch of other bands that should be inducted along with that company, obviously. Um, what is your opinion of how they actually vote bands in? Do you actually have an opinion on that of, or anything? Or, you know? Well, I I, I don't know. I like, I've like. i been to the museum in Cleveland, and I thought it was funny because they have our stuff in the museum. Anna and Nancy have a big, a beautiful stage dress each, and there are a couple of guitars. And what's also funny is there's the guitar that's by Nancy's thing is actually my guitar. <laughs> she gave him my guitar because we had these two guitars made with our Bad Animals characters on it, and I don't know where hers went, but that, that <laughs> the one that I had is in the Hall of Fame. It says it's Nancy's. But... So I thought that was kind of a good omen, though. I mean, if they're displaying our stuff, and you know, we haven't been in inducted yet, but I don't really know how the voting works. And uh, but we had 20 top 40 singles. That's a lot of singles. So well, someday, like I said, hopefully uh, bands like you know the Bad Companies and the Hearts, and I'll go on and on. The Alice Coopers, the Kisses, the Rushes, the Iron Maidens can be all inducted someday. Um, <laughs> and Queen. No. Queen's not in there yet? Oh, my God. Well, see, that's just not right. right. I mean, some of those bands are the greatest bands that have ever been. Oh, my gosh. Well, so so I'm in good company in the people that uh, haven't <laughs> been, been put in yet. I know there's some great people in there, but there's some really great people that aren't in there yet. So we'll see. Time will tell. So now you're performing with Bad Company at the C-Mac, which is right around the corner. We're actually on a lake right now. You probably just heard the boat go by. That was the uh, the noise in the background. What's it? What's the difference between, say, playing with like Paul Rogers solo than playing with Bad Company? Like, how how's that going? Well, for me, it's completely different. Um, for Lynn, it's probably fairly similar. The Paul Rogers band is usually just bass, drums, and, and one guitar, and Paul. So I do all the guitar stuff, and it's a uh, there's a whole different dynamic to playing in, and that's called a power trio. Playing in a trio like that's different. Bad Company, I'm playing with Mick, so there's a lot of more two guitar interplay, and it's a it's really great playing with him. Our styles are, are quite different, and so when we when we do rhythm parts, it, you get that stonesy kind of in and out uh, kind of vibe where the two guitars do the little interplay and stuff. We're doing some duet solos, and the other biggest difference is with Paul, we do the free songs we do the firm we do some of the blues stuff we did a tour in england a few years ago in the uk where we played virtually all free stuff we only did a couple of bad company songs we were over there when the free dvd retrospective had come out so we were promoting that and it was really great because we played songs that hadn't been played live since the original band broke up and um, yeah it was really really great we started certain songs like all we did i'll be creeping people go no yeah, no one's played that you know since and this tour it's great we're playing a song called electric land that bad companies never ever performed before you know they never played it live we're doing that uh, we did sweet little sister on the dvd last year and they never performed that live so we're actually playing stuff that they never played live in a day so it's still that music's still growing you know it's kind of cool to play a song they never ever played it what other things can the uh, fans, I should say, expect uh, tonight? Or uh, you have, have one more show lined up for this part of the run uh, in Atlantic City on Saturday. What can the fans expect? Well, we are doing something special tonight. On uh, This is our last show with the Doobie Brothers. They've been on this whole tour, and they're just fantastic. I mean, it's like their whole set is hits. You know, the week of we got some hits, too. It's a pretty great show. It's the kind of show I would go see if, I was, if it came near my house. But... Um, the Doobies are fantastic, and tonight uh, three of the guitar players are going to get up and play with us oh. during our set. Mm -hmm. And during Rock and Roll Fantasy, we have we have the guitar army up there, or as I like to call it, the Wire Choir. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it's fantastic. It's five guitars. It should be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy. You have something to look forward to. Yeah, that's that, and then that'll be good, good night. So, um, we won't be playing with them in Atlantic City, so uh, who knows what'll happen. Last show of a tour can be unpredictable, yes. you know. You have, to w you have to watch your back, watch out for cream pies and stuff like that. <laughs> um, this past January at NAMM, um, the unveiling of the Paul Reed Smith guitar of your Golden Eagle. It's your guitar, Howard Lee's uh, Golden Eagle guitar. The guitar is identical to the instrument um, that was built for you way back in the early 80s when you were with Hart. Um, there's a limited run of 100 guitars. Uh, who came, whose idea was it, you know, to build a guitar? Was it yours or was it Paul Reed Smith? Well, <laughs> you probably asked him, you might get a different answer. I mentioned it to him maybe three or four NAMM shows ago. I said, we should do a limited run of like 25 Eagles. And he goes, uh, no, I don't want to get into that replica thing of making, remaking your old, you know, you know, like a lot of good guitar companies these days are making, all they're doing is making their old guitars. And he, w he didn't want to know if he wanted to cross that bridge. And then the, the, the following year we were playing together and he goes, we should, we should do, we should do a run of Eagles. How many do you, you want to do? And I thought, let's, let's do a hundred. And I just kind of made it up. And he said, yeah, let's do, we'll do a hundred. So it was kind of, he, I had the idea and then he had the idea. We both had the idea at separate times, but it's it was a big step for him because I say it's the first um, reissue or replica or a guitar based on one of his earlier guitars. But it's totally the guitar. If you're going to do that, this is the one to do it on. It's the it's one of the greatest guitars he's ever made, and uh, the the hundred are very very. You can if you close your eyes, you can't really tell. I've I got one of the hundred, and it's just it's exactly the same. They even did my case. They did a replica of the case, complete with like the tape on it and markings on it and stickers. I mean, it's amazing. And they called me up. You know, the original guitar is made from an old dresser, from a 300-year-old maple dresser. It was the bass player's underwear drawer. And, and so there's a plug where the drawer pull went to open the drawer. So there's a plug on the top of the guitar that he just filled up. <laughs> got a call. Howard's got a call. <laughs> Hi, honey. I'm on camera doing an interview. Okay, bye. <laughs> anyway, so he calls me up. He goes, okay, well, we're going to do the guitar. Do you want to do the plug? I go, yeah, you got to do the plug. Because friends of mine have asked me, are they ever going to make that? You know, got to have the plug in there. So I go, yeah, we're going to have the plug. And he goes, oh, man, the guys in the wood shop are not going to want to take a beautiful piece of <laughs> expensive wood and just drill a hole in it and then plug it right back up. I go, you got to do it. You got to make it accurate. So it's accurate in every way. So I'm pretty proud of that. They're sold. They're already sold out, too. Great. The last They made the last one just last week. The, the number 100 just got I was finished. just going to say, when can, it, can fans still get the guitar? But you pretty much answer my next question. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, the, the last they made just made the last couple. So they're going to music stores. So if you happen to see one in your music store, you should grab it because they're already going up in value. What can the fans expect from Howard Lees and or Bad Company for the rest of 2009 into 2010? Well, there's uh, there's nothing firm yet, but this this tour is going so well. We're doing big business, and everybody's having a great time. And so it seems like we're going to be doing some more. So I think they're talking about maybe Europe in the fall and then coming back to the States following that and finishing up because we, we're only doing 10 shows just all on the East Coast. So the people out West are going, hey. Yeah. What the heck? So, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I'll, I'll be surprised if we don't do this some more because it's just going too well. People love the show. Well, fans, BackstageAccess.com. Check out Howard on tour if they come to your town in the fall or winter or even at NAMM if he's uh, unveiling maybe another set of guitars. But uh, we want to thank you for taking the time to talk to us today, man. My pleasure. Thanks for coming out. And check this interview out when it comes your way. Thanks a lot. Let's go water skiing. Ha, ha, ha.